We all know that Superman is one of the most powerful beings in all of comic book universes, and alongside that, he is just purely good. But that doesn't mean that every incarnation of the character is the same. DC is known for having a vast number of universes, each with their own versions of their famous heroes, but who says they all have to be exactly the same? So what is going on, all you nerdy folk out there? My name is Jack, and welcome back to Top 10 Nerd. Join me today when we talk about some of the dark alternate versions of Superman out there that honestly make him a much more compelling character. You'll likely notice if you decide to look up these characters for yourself later on that many of them have neutral alignments, which in my opinion makes a more fleshed out and rounded character because that means they're not necessarily tied down by their morals. They just do whatever they think is right. Anyways, enough of that, let's get into it. Number 10, Red Sun Superman. Answer me this, have you ever wondered what would happen if Superman didn't have that good and wholesome upbringing and was raised somewhere else? Like, uh, I don't know, let's say the Soviet Union? Well, wonder no longer because that is exactly what happens in the comic book miniseries Superman Red Sun. Instead of his ship crash landing in Kansas, Superman lands in the Ukraine in the middle of the Cold War. In the story, Superman is raised with the ideals that the Soviet Union instills in him, and the world feels a sense of fear as a superpowered alien is the Soviet's new secret weapon. He still has all the powers you associate with Superman because he is still exposed to the yellow sun. With the passion and sense of justice we've come to expect from Superman, Soviet Superman was so dedicated to his country which made him incredibly dangerous for the wrong reasons, because he was a living weapon that the Soviets used to spread their power throughout the globe. Over the course of about 20 years, he traveled the world with Wonder Woman, converting other nations and even becoming their new leader. He was a good leader, don't get me wrong, because he is still Superman, it was just for a very bad world. Highly recommend you check out this alternate Superman for yourself, starting with 2003's Superman Red Sun, Volume 1, Number 1. Number 9, Ultraman. Similar to our Superman's origin story, this iteration was sent from the planet Krypton to Earth-3. However, it's not really stated why, since Krypton didn't explode in this universe. On his way to Earth-3, he first came into contact with Kryptonite, which started the change in his body that turned him into the super-powered powerhouse that we know. And since then, every time he came in contact with Kryptonite, he only grew stronger. After becoming an adult, he renamed himself Ultraman, and this is where he vastly differs from our Superman, because he became a brutal authoritarian and ruthlessly rules his version of the Justice League called the Crime Syndicate. Conquer most of the world with their help. After largely conquering most of the world, Ultraman developed a new type of supervision that allowed him to see into the Earth-1 dimension. Seeking an open battle to test their powers after defeating the military forces of their native Earth-3, the Crime Syndicate challenged the combined forces of the Earth-1 Justice League of America and Earth-2 Justice Society of America. Not able to withstand the combined might of two Earth's greatest super beings, the Crime Syndicate was defeated and imprisoned in an extra-dimensional bubble created by the Earth-1 Green Lantern. Ultraman is a perfect example of someone who has all the power but is isn't happy. Hailing from an Earth where evil always wins, Ultraman is always looking for something new to conquer, torment, or honestly both. Check him out for yourself, starting with his first appearance all the way back in 1964's Justice League of America, number 29. Number 8, Overman. Hailing from Earth-10, a universe where the Germans won World War II, we have Overman, the leader of the new Reichmen and the Superman of this Earth. Kal-El was sent to Earth-10 as a baby in a ship away from the planet Krypton because it was dying. Pretty standard Superman origin, however, much like the Red Sun Superman, he was raised by the wrong people. Alongside the German forces, Overman conquered the world in, I want to say, less than 20 years, after which he decided to leave the Earth for a while. Three years later, he returned with a clear head and saw all the damage he helped cause and became an advocate against all of what he once stood for, while still working alongside them for some reason. Eventually, German scientists used Cal to create a clone of him known as Overgirl that Overman learned to love like family. However, she died not too long after her creation, and that hit him hard. Inconsolable and grief-stricken, Overman leaked some precious information to the Freedom Fighters that resulted in the demise of the new Reichman and Metropolis. Check out probably one of the saddest Superman stories I've ever heard of, starting with 2015's The Multiversity Guidebook Number 1. Number 7, The Eradicator. Existing on New Earth, the Eradicator was an ancient Kryptonian weapon merged with a human body to form the last son of Krypton, an extreme vigilante who surfaced after the death of Superman. The Eradicator was given to Superman while on Warworld, and it began its work again on Earth, creating the Fortress of Solitude and trying to manipulate Superman into becoming the ideal Kryptonian. When it failed, the Eradicator created a new body for itself based on Superman. The Eradicator had all of Superman's memories, even though it wasn't actually the real Superman, but was far more brutal and violent. It didn't actually have the power to absorb solar radiation, so it relied on Superman's body to transfer energy to it. Over the years, it became more compassionate and even fought alongside Superman in a few fights, the most notable being their fight against Cyborg Superman, and even sacrificed itself to save Earth, but it always remained dedicated to preserving Superman and Kryptonian life. In DC's Rebirth continuity, the Eradicator has returned, and it's just as dangerous as ever, so why not take a look at the Superman 
and Cologne story for yourself, starting with their first appearance in 1989's Action Comics Annual Number 2, all the way to 2011's Action Comics Number 901. Number 6, Black Zero. This is actually the third Black Zero. This was an alternate version of Superboy, known as Superman 2, from a hyper time stream in which Superman had not returned to life, and his clone had been left to fully mature and develop his full Kryptonian powers, in addition to some tactile telekinesis. With this new power, he could create a field around himself that made him invulnerable, allowed him to fly, and also move heavy objects, similar to Superman's strength. Superman 2 tried to fight crime, but ended up losing a battle that cost its life, leading to a backlash against human cloning. He decided to rename himself after the pro-cloning organization on Krypton, Black Zero, and fight for clone rights. He used Project Cadmus to kill off most of the world's superheroes, and recreated most of them as clones of the originals, but that wasn't enough for him. He entered Hyper Time, a cross between a time stream and the multiverse during an era where DC Comics only consisted of one universe, to travel to other realities to fight for clone rights as well. Black Zero was a fanatical and ruthless warrior who was eventually and thankfully stopped by the combined strength of numerous superboys from across hypertime. Appearing across only a few issues, this is a short story that is definitely worth a read, so if you feel like it, check out 1999 Superboy Volume 4, number 61 to 64. Number 5, Super Doom. After a trip to Tibet, Clark, Lois Lane, and Jimmy Olsen built a machine that used vibrations to bring thoughts into reality, and the best possible use for it in their eyes was to create a Superman that was a thought-powered redeemer capable of saving the world. Unfortunately, they ended up having to sell the machine to Overcorp, and Overcorp took their Superman idea and twisted it so much that the brutal and toxic Super Doom was born. A self-described killer franchise, Super Doom wasted no time in becoming the preeminent superhuman of its world and sought out to eliminate any form of competition, meaning he was on the hunt for others. Superman. After ravaging countless parallel planets and butchering numerous Superman and Superman-like adjacent people, it finally tracked down its creators to Earth-23, where it killed Jimmy and mortally wounded Clark. Later, Super Doom was summoned to Prime Earth by an unwilling Lex Luthor as a final doomsday weapon against Superman, and after a brutal struggle, Superman overcame the monster, which, upon defeat, transformed into a bomb that Superman managed to place on the dark side of the moon before detonation, seemingly annihilating Super Doom once and for all. Give this story a read for yourself, starting with 2012's Action Comics Volume 2, Number 9. Number 4, Superman Earth 1198. In Superman The Dark Side, the baby Kal-El ship is diverted on its path to Earth and instead lands on the planet Apocalypse, home of the overlord Darkseid. In this version of Superman, Darkseid is the one to raise him and Superman becomes his loyal and devoted disciple and helps him in the destruction of New Genesis. As well as this, Superman doesn't grow up to wear tights and a cape, instead he opts for a menacing black and red armor with a lightning bolt S across his chest. Not only is this Superman powerful, evil, and terrifying, he also has a thing for weapons, using the Apocalypse Apocalyptian sword and Omega Warhead, as well as anything he can get his hands on. Superman in this story is more of a pawn for Darkseid than inherently evil, but much like the others, his actions have horrific consequences. With his direct and indirect help, Darkseid managed to extract the anti-life equation from Superman's cells and subjugated the world and expanded his reach. With Earth by his side and a yellow sun to power him up, Superman was forced to fight Darkseid to end his reign of terror. Highly recommend you check out this three issue run for yourself, starting with 1998 Superman Darkseid number one. Number 3, Cyborg Superman. Now there have been two major characters that have become Cyborg Superman. The first and most famous is the astronaut Hank Henshaw. When his solar flare hit Henshaw's spacecraft during a space experiment, he and his crew started to mutate. The mutation was so strong that once back on Earth, Henshaw's crew, along with his wife, all committed suicide. Before Henshaw's body disintegrates from the solar flare, he is able to upload his mind using NASA equipment. With the help of the birthing matrix that was used to send Superman to Earth, Henshaw creates a cyborg body with all the powers that Superman has. After this, Henshaw finds out that Superman had thrown the Eradicator into the sun, which caused the original solar flare. Blaming Superman for everything, the newly formed Cyborg Superman seeks revenge on the Man of Steel. To destroy the real Superman's reputation, Cyborg Superman tried to use a nuclear bomb to destroy Metropolis. He was defeated because that's what happens when you go up against Superman, but used his powers to inhabit machines to return over and over and over again once even conquering most of the planet Apocalypse. After his ultimate defeat, he was taken in by Sinestro during the Sinestro Core War, making him even more powerful than ever. Since the New 52 era, Cyborg Superman has been revamped as having been the father of Supergirl, Zor-El, who survived Krypton's destruction only to have been transformed into the villain he is today. Why not give Hank's story a read for yourself, starting with 1990's Adventures of Superman number 466. Number 2, Lord Superman. 
This alternate Superman doesn't have any roots with comics. He is actually from the Justice League TV series, specifically 2003's episode A Better World, and is one of the first dark Superman that we've seen in the animated universe. This Superman lost his way in battle with President Lex Luthor after Luthor executed the Flash in front of him, and mocked the Man of Steel for never being able to see things through to their logical conclusion. Superman, overcome with rage, executed Luthor with his heat vision, took over the world with his Justice League's help, and formed the Justice Lords Crime Free Regiment. They saw themselves as the world savior and the terror was a small price to pay to realize their vision. Of course, when they found an alternate Earth, they immediately imagined all the quote-unquote good they could have done there, and Lord Superman's incredible powers would have let him succeed on this new Earth if it weren't for the regular Superman, who managed to defeat the Justice Lord before it was too late. I think the worst thing about Justice Lord Superman is that he truly thought he was doing the right thing, but we all know for a fact that he wasn't. Check out this two-part episode for yourself, and let me know what you think in the comments below. And finally, number one, Injustice Superman. Before I dive more into this one, I have to say that I love the Injustice games so much. I remember when I first got the game and I did not put it down until I was finished with the story, so comment below who your go-to character is. In Injustice 1, I'd have to say mine is either Nightwing or Batman, but in Injustice 2, it has to be Green Arrow or Scarecrow. Anyways, sorry about that, let's talk about Injustice Superman. In a storyline amalgamated from diverse comic plots along with the Justice League animated two-parter, A Better World, that I just talked about, the Joker sadistically fear gasses Superman into killing Lois Lane. Superman responds by putting his open hand straight through the clown's chest and turns the world into a dictatorship-like police state. In the process, he doxes Batman, murders Shazam and Martian Manhunter, converts the Justice League into his personal secret police, and gets his butt kicked by Alfred Pennyworth. He's finally defeated by a still good Superman from another universe who encases him in a red sunlight generating capsule. Now there have been a few storylines over the years that have revolved around the idea of what would happen if Superman went bad and whether anyone could stop him, and this just proves that the only man who can take down Superman is Superman himself. Why not play the games again for yourself to refresh your memory, or check out 2013's Injustice Gods Among Us number one. That'll be it for this video, everyone. Did I miss one of your favorite dark alternate versions of Superman? Well, let me know in the comments below, and maybe we'll continue this list with a part two and cover them all. If you haven't already, subscribe to Top 10 Nerd to stay up to date on all things nerdy, and while you're at it, why not ring that notification bell so you know whenever we upload a video. As always, my name is Jack. Thank you guys so much for watching, and make sure to stay nerdy, my friends.